Here I've got a nice number theory problem which involves the famous number 42. Our goal is to show that for all natural numbers, I'll call them n, we have n to the 7 minus n is a multiple of 42. So let's look at a couple of examples. I'll let you guys fill in some extra examples if you want. Maybe post in the comments exactly what you get from those extra examples. So we have 1 to the 7 minus 1. That's clearly equal to 0. But 0 is definitely a multiple of 42. It is 0 times 42. Next, we have 2 to the 7 minus 2. 2 to the 7 is 128. Subtract 2, you get 126. That is 3 times 42. So that's also a multiple of 42. Like I said, maybe check the cases when you have 3 to the 7 minus 3 and a couple more and post them in the comments if you'd like. So we're going to use the power of equivalence modulo m, where m is some natural number, in particular a prime, as we'll see, in order to solve this, along with a very beautiful result known as Fermat's little theorem. And this theorem may seem like completely devoid of application to the real world, but it's actually really important to modern day cryptography, like code writing. Okay, so anyway, we say that A is congruent to B mod M, so that's how we read that. So A and B are integers, positive or negative, and M is a natural number. So A is congruent to B mod M if and only if A minus B is a multiple of M. So let's look at some examples. 15 is congruent to 3 mod 4. That's because 15 minus 3 is equal to 12. 29 is congruent to 1 mod 7. That's because 29 minus 1 is 28. 28 is a multiple of 7, just like 12 was a multiple of 4. Okay, so like I said, we're going to use a result called Fermat's Little Theorem. It has a generalization called Euler's Theorem, which I've done in previous videos. And it says for all natural numbers n and prime numbers p, we have n to the p is congruent to n mod p. This is maybe a slightly different version than you might see in a textbook, but this is equivalent to a version that you would see in a textbook. So, for example, if we take 3 to the 5th power, that's 243. But 243, you can easily see that that is 3 mod 5 because it's 3 more than 240, which is a multiple of 5. So here we have 3 to the 5 is 3 mod 5. Just like n to the p is n mod p, like I said, for all natural numbers n and primes p. Okay, so keeping this in mind, let's jump into the solution. Okay, so now that we've reviewed all of the necessary results in order to look at a solution, let's revisit our goal, which is to show that n to the 7 minus n is always a multiple of 42. But let's rewrite that in the language of congruence modulo 42 in this case. So this is equivalent to showing the following statement. So I'll write this. Want to show that n to the 7 is congruent to n modulo 42. And this has got to be true for all natural numbers n. But looking at it this way, or looking at it the original way, we can split this up into something happening modulo primes. And like I said, you can look at it from this standpoint or from this standpoint to get here. So this splits into the following three statements which need to be proven. And those three statements depend on the prime factors of 42. Notice that the prime factors of 42 are 2, 3, and 7. In fact, 2 times 3 times 7 is 42. So what we'd really like to show is that n to the 7 is congruent to n modulo 7. We need that n to the 7 is congruent to n modulo 3. And we need n to the 7 is congruent to n modulo 2. If we can show those three things, then we're good to go. Because this means that n to the 7 minus n is a multiple of 7. Whereas these statements would say that n to the 7 minus n is a multiple of 3 and a multiple of 2.
but if n to the seven is a multiple of seven, three, and two, then it must be in a multiple of seven times three times two, given that those are relatively prime. In other words, it must be a multiple of 42. Okay, great. So let's notice that this first statement is essentially already proven because of Fermat's little theorem. This, ex this is exactly the setup of Fermat's little theorem. So we actually have no extra work here. So I'll just put FLT there to say that we know that by Fermat's little theorem. Okay, and now let's move on to this second one, which I'll make as a green dot. So we want to show that n to the seven is congruent to n mod three. So let's start by taking n to the seven and rewriting it as follows. I'm gonna write this as n to the three times n to the three times n, because three plus three plus one is seven. But we know n to the three is congruent to n mod three by Fermat's little theorem. So we can reduce each of these using Fermat's little theorem to say that we have n times n times n modulo three. Again, this guy reduced to this by Fermat's little theorem and likewise this guy reduced to this by Fermat's little theorem, but that's exactly n cubed mod three. But again, by an application of Fermat's little theorem, that is n mod three. So that's good. That means we have proven this second statement as well. We just had to do a couple of extra steps to make it look exactly like an application of our result. So now let's move on to this last one, which I'll make with a blue dot. So I'll move that down here and let's start with n to the seven. And I think you can probably see where we're gonna go. We're gonna split it up similar to like what we did above. So let's write this as n squared times n squared times n squared times n. Two plus two plus two plus one is seven. But now each of these n squareds can be reduced to n mod two. So we know that this is n times n times n times n mod two. Again, by reducing each of these n squareds. But now we can put these back together this guy right here is n squared. This guy right here is n squared. But each of those will in turn reduce mod two by Fermat's little theorem. This will reduce to n times n, which is n squared mod two. Another application will give us n modulo two. So after all of that, we have n to the seven is n mod two. So that means we've proven this statement as well. So since this purple check, this green check, and this blue check mean that our difference is a multiple of seven, three, and two respectively, that means that our difference is in fact a multiple of 42, which is exactly where we wanted to end. And that's a good place to stop.